A very good morning. You are keeping it here on, NB on NBS television. This is The Breakfast Meeting with myself, Jackie Mutasi. This morning on The Breakfast Meeting, we are discussing Matters Health. Now, the Heroes in Health Awards are back this year on the 10th of November. This, bit, this has been around for, since 2019, celebrating different individuals who have made transformations in the healthcare system, be it doctor, nurse, midwife, and other sectors. This morning, joining me are two partners of the Heroes in Health Awards to tell us a bit more about the theme this year, the different categories for nomination, what, what the awards are all about, and I'm very excited to, to introduce my guests for this morning. Joining me is Noor Nachibu Kamusisi, the Deputy ED for Center of Human Rights and Development. Lovely to have you, Miss Noor. Lovely to have you too, Jackie. Great to be here. And also joining us is Dr. Stella Kanyere, the Deputy Country Director of Living Good. Lovely to have you, Dr. Stella. Thank you, Jackie. Perhaps I'll start with you, Dr. Stella. You can tell us a little bit about Living Goods and its involvement in health transformation here in Uganda. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you for having Nur and I uh, this morning. Excited that the Heroes in Health Awards are back, you know, in 2023, and Living Goods want, being one of the uh, organizations that is sponsoring um, these awards. We are an international NGO that has presence in Uganda, Kenya, and Burkina Faso, and are supporting the community health system, you know, the grassroots of where health is made. We are supporting community health workers, locally referred to as VHTs in Uganda, ensuring that, you know, they are supported, they are equipped, they are tapping into the digital transformation that is happening right now to be able to advance basic quality health care to the communities that they serve. Absolutely. And Ms. Noor, as the Deputy ED for Centre of Human Rights Development, can you talk to us about your partnership with the Heroes in Health Awards? Thank you so much. The Centre for Health, Human Rights and Development is that one institution that utilises the law to advance the realisation of the right to health in Uganda. And the Heroes in Health Awards is one of that innovative approach that the Ministry is uh, taking forward, which we really see as important to advance the realization of the right to health, because we feel that uh, the health service providers at the forefront are a key partner that we must look at, given all the circumstances and you know, conditions of work that they go through. So with this innovation, we actually thought that as uh, an organization, we need to pull out and actually show the ministry and the service providers that this is a novel idea that we must support as partners. So it's important that we're having it every year and happy that this year looks at really uh, how we are, look, we are engaging as different partners to advance this specific heroes that ensure that rights are actually uh, respected. Okay. And let's talk about the theme for this year. You've talked about a multi-sectoral approach. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us about what the theme is and what it really means for the transformation of health? So over time, um, we have realized that we can only advance health in this country if we worked together. And I think the outbreak of COVID-19 was one clear example of what it means for all sectors to come together towards the realization of the right to health. So I think in COVID, we really saw that even the youngest child in this country could come up and support the health sector in one way or another. But also, uh, with our 13 years of experience, we have realized that when you speak about health, it goes beyond the Ministry of Health to Ministry of Gender, to Ministry of Education, to Ministry of Finance. And for me, the Heroes in Health Awards theme is how all these actors come together to see that we advance the, uh, the, the realization of the right to health, but most specifically to see that the people at the forefront, who the health workers are actually recognized for the efforts okay. they put in, in ensuring that our rights are actually respected and protected. protected. Mm -hmm. I think we started to look at healthcare professionals in a very different light mm -hmm. under the COVID-19 pandemic. These were people who sacrificed their lives, people who put their lives on the line mm -hmm. <coughs> for our own sake and benefit. Mm -hmm. So it's important that they're recognized, but also we have a multi-sectoral approach. And you mentioned the different government organizations, the different ministries, mm -hmm. but it's not just the government, it's also the private sector exactly. that has to get involved. Exactly. And perhaps you can talk to us about, about that, Dr. Stella, as a member of the private sector who is actively involved. You have been a partner in the previous years as well. Can you share with us some significant changes or outcomes that have, that have resulted from your partnership? First, for us as Living Goods, uh, initially when these awards were rolled out, 
there was a critical cadre in the healthcare system that was not initially being recognized. That's the community health worker, the VHT, who we know is the health center one, the very first primary contact of you know, health for many communities. So we came in to ensure that that cadre is not left behind, that they are also recognized for their contribution to the healthcare system. But also to reiterate what Nuru has said, healthcare is not just about the health system. It's me and you, it's Jackie yourself, it's your community, it's the private sector, it's the academic institutions, it's the different um, government agencies. So I think these awards uh, present an opportunity and the theme for this year really resonates that we are to build health systems that are resilient, I think COVID shook us a bit, that are resilient, that are people-centered, that are responsive, that are cost-effective. We need everybody to be on board. And I think uh, the Heroes for Health Award is presenting an opportunity where key players are presenting programs that, that are game-changing, products that are game-changing, but the actual individuals as well. We are going to be able to see healthcare individuals, both in the private sector, the public sector, including the VHTs who are contributing to healthcare. And I think them being recognized, you know, motivates the workforce, but also throws a spotlight on the work that healthcare workers are doing do. in this country. Who doesn't want to be celebrated for the work that they exactly. do? Exactly. Right. Who doesn't? <laughs> Ms. Nuru, the theme for this year is strategic multi-sectoral partnerships. Mm -hmm. As the Center for Health, Human Rights and Development, have you made any strategic partnerships and in the healthcare sector? Mm -hmm. And what have been the results? So I'll just give you a recent example of uh, one of the big innovations that we've had as CEHAD. Uh, we just concluded the Uganda National Conference on Health, Human Rights and Development, the first of its kind in Uganda. And I should say we had about 335 delegates, both in Uganda, US, uh, Kenya and other countries. And uh, for us, I think that really resonated with the theme for this year's uh, HIHA Awards. Why? Because we realized that the biggest message from this conference was the need to have different sectors into the health sector. And uh, I think that's one of the biggest achievements that we've had. It was a strong message throughout to say, while they had as organized with the Minister of Health, we are also here as other partners, private sectors, um, to see that actually health is actually realized. And as earlier indicated, I think for me, the biggest lesson that we have learned in this country is that health is not health. I'll just give you an example. When you do budget advocacy with parliament, we actually normally ask the government to get back to its commitment, indicating to them that you committed that 15% of your national budget should go back to the health sector. The question they've always asked us is, what's the contribution of the road sector to health? What's the contribution of water? What's the contribution of all these other sectors? And kind of they map up all these small percentages getting back to health. And for me, that's a clear indication that we cannot speak about health as health, and we're not speaking about the contributions of other actors and sectors into health. The journalists, we are speaking about health, for example. And for me, I, of course, I know there is no specific award for the journalists. There uh, should be. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but I mean, the conversations we're having today are yes. about health. And we are speaking about health through a media through house. Media so practice. there should be an award to the contribution of the, health, the media to the health sector. And that already shows that you cannot speak about health as you, the health sector, but partners coming on board. Otherwise, what would, we, what would we be doing here if health was just looking at the Minister of Health? So just to indicate that we can only partner with others to ensure that there's a realization of the right health in this country. I love that. Mm. That, that was a perfect example to actually show us what strategic part sectorial partnerships looks like. Thank I mean, you. journalists, health journalists, we have an incredible one here that has exactly. done incredible work exactly. when it comes to healthcare reporting. I'm sure you know him, Mugeni Henry. But let's go back to our topic this morning. Dr. Stella, as Living Goods, you have a vision for the healthcare transformation in this country. How does it align with the theme of this year's HIHA Awards? Perfect alignment with our vision. So at Living Goods, our vision is to ensure that families, communities, irrespective of where you are located, irrespective of where you are born, that you receive health care. I think we all are in agreement that health care is a human right, quality health care. And I think the theme for this year resonates with us around it being a systems issue, you know, but also bringing in different sectors are uh, uh, playing into this health space and specifically also looking at the health workforce. For us at Living Goods, we look at the system, but also ensuring that that critical cadre, especially the VHT, 
is supervised. They are equipped. They are, you know, compensated. They're tapping into the current digital and data um, transformation. So the theme for this year for us resonates with, um, with our vision. And we are happy that we are participating, that we are um, contributing to this good um, cause. But also to continue reiterating that we have to look at healthcare as a multi-sectoral issue. It's everybody's business. It's my business. It's your business. And I think HIHA itself presents an opportunity where different partners, different stakeholders, the donors, the government itself, the academic institutions are coming together to speak positively about health in this country. We'll be able to see the good work that healthcare is doing. You don't normally see that um, you know, in the press or in the media sometimes. It's always spotlighting what is not going right. right. But I think we have an opportunity in these awards this particular year to see the amazing work that different sectors are doing in the health system. Absolutely. Yeah, totally aligned with our vision. Now you've made an important point that this has actually happened all because of the recent challenges in terms of it's no longer a youth issue, it's no longer a me issue, it's everybody has to get involved. But let's talk about the recent challenges, Ms. Noor, with the recent challenges like the pandemic, and it's not just that, there are global health challenges mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. to this day. How has that made Sehad change its approach to research, to the work that it does? Mm -hmm. And what lessons have you learned? Okay. Thank you so much. So as an institution, we actually look out for the most vulnerable person to ensure that their services are actually reach that person. And we appreciate so much when we see uh, reports coming in from the districts where service providers are doing their best to provide services. I think at one moment, we saw one who was climbing a hill. Yeah. You know, climbing a hill to ensure services reach the most vulnerable. I have been in a district where uh, there's, a, there's a health center three and a health center two. And in this health center two, which is near the landing site, they cannot provide, for example, HIV medication. And this one health worker would walk up every morning at 5 a.m., get onto a border border, get to that health center two to bring the medication of HIV closer to the community, right? And by 8 a.m., she's in the facility as if nothing has happened. So just imagine, that this person is doing it at her own pace, at ensuring that services are there. And in communities knowing that if I don't get to this facility by 5.30, I'll not get my medication. So some are, some of, these are some of the challenges that people face. So one of the things we want to do is to empower the communities to know that while there's challenges within the health services, they should actually, sorry, within the health system, they should access the services themselves. So we have moved into community empowerment, we have moved into litigation, and litigation means also suing the government that we're working with today to ensure that services are provided. And because of the so many challenges that we have had, we have actually realized that the government acts. For example, we sued them on maternal deaths in the country, and when court came up to say that, you know what, we need a report on uh, maternal death audits, I can tell you I have the report. I know it's been presented in parliament. I know that the Minister of Health is planning to see how to implement the recommendations from the report they have made themselves. If we hadn't sued, it means they would not see the challenges, they would not act. So I think for us it's lessons, but also lessons of knowing that you can sue the government, but at the same time, sit and dialogue sit and with, work them. with them. Exactly, yeah. because they are the leaders of this country. So for us, we have learned, picked lessons that when you see a thing that is not working well within the health sector, please. Hold the government accountable. Where you see an innovation like HIHA, come on board and support them. And make sure that that hero in health, that health service provider, that frontline health worker who is doing well is actually recognized. So if we, we look at the challenges, but we also see how, what innovative ways can we utilize as a country to pick out those innovations, to recognize them so that another health worker, another service provider, another frontline worker picks up and says, if no was recognized, Jackie can be recognized, I can do more. I love that. Speaking of, speaking of um, coming on board when it comes to HIHA, if somebody wants to get involved, if an organization wants to come on board and sponsor mm. the HIHA Awards, what can they do? What benefits would you say, mm. not just for their organization, mm. but what is the impact that that sponsorship would make? I really think it's, it's recognizing your effort. It's not too expensive to support HIHA. I think the ministry is open to whatever support someone can bring on board. So it's not about uh, having lots of money to come and support. But if I can stand here and say Se had supported, has sponsored, he had this year, NBS would want to do the same next year to say, you know what? 
we are here, we are also supporting. Also giving just a talk show like this to say we are here to support is a good sponsorship. So when you sponsor, you're actually contributing to the lives of those that are on the front line for, to ensure that people in this country uh, access services. You're also contributing to the lives of the vulnerable communities that, you know, will wake up one day to say, health worker X or VHTY has been recognized and because of that they're actually able to bring the services closer to us. So it's the kind of seemingly small things that innovate people, that push them to work. So sponsorship can be in any form. You can't just wake up and say, you know what, we shall support the venue or we'll support the award or we have this plaque or accolade or whatever, you know, to support this particular Team, or waking up and saying for us as part of here we've been working with health facility X and we can support our health workers into uh, uh, continuing medical education for example to ensure that services are provided so it is not you know a, a, a blanket sponsorship but all the innovations towards that it's not a blanket sponsorship it's not just giving money like exactly. usual sponsorships mm. but how do you actively get involved and help change the narrative I think the ministry is open the ministry is open. Like I said, for us, we dialogue and dissent with the ministry. We wouldn't be here. They're very, really open to uh, you know, bringing all partners together because I think, again, one of the lessons they've picked is that you cannot realize health in this country without other partners. I have never walked into the ministry doors and they are locked against me. You know? So I think it is people opening up, standing up, and showing that, you know what, we are here, we are in this area, how can we work together with the ministry? So I really would we, we uh, request whichever partner or individual that is out there to walk into the doors of the ministry and actually show that they can support this particular venture. Absolutely. Maybe to add on to what Please. Was saying, it, it actually presents opportunities for, you know, learning about what's happening in the space, you know. Collaborations are happening, consortia are being built, different organizations have different strengths, you know, areas that they are experts in. You know, CEHAD is for human rights. We are supporting community health. There'll be another partner who is looking at data, who is pro-innovations. It gives you the opportunity to have all that expertise in one space. Hear what everybody's doing. You might be surprised, you know, on the innovations that are happening, cost efficiencies that are being um, looked at as programs are being rolled out into the country. So I also appeal to organizations out there, uh, you don't have to be in health, come to HEHA, Take it an, you know, as an opportunity, as a platform to collaborate, to partner strategically, like the word uh, in the theme this year is, how are we doing it strategically this year? How are we calling ourselves to action? I think sometimes we talk too much, but now we are getting into areas where we are calling ourselves to action. What are we doing? And HeHiza is one of those platforms where you could actually um, find that sort of collaboration previous sponsor of the HEHA Awards, what insights can you offer to, to potential sponsors about the impact that you make as a, as a sponsor? For us as Living Goods, um, the one thing that we are very proud of is that that healthcare worker, the health center one, who initially was not recognized, is now being recognized. So uh, come the 10th of November, we shall see VHTs or community health workers who are doing amazing work in their communities, getting recognized. So for us, that was a win. That's that what is. we wanted. That foot soldier who is actually in the community, who is accessing your doorstep and promoting health and counseling families and you know, um, giving them health education that is actually being recognized as well. But also, it's a, a space for us to identify other partners, to identify um, what the development partners are saying, what are the, are the research academic institutions doing? You, you know, are they running projects that can be scaled now? That's the platform that we can actually use to pick up some of these uh, innovations. So for us as Living Goods, HEHA is dear to us. It will continue to be. Uh, and we've also seen actually VHTs getting motivated. I think, Nuru, you spoke about a health worker who is sitting on a board, a board at 5 a.m. to take, uh, you know, services to a health facility. It's not even in her job description, but there are people who are doing this amazing work. And once they get recognized, it powers them, but also inspires other people as well. But it could also be an opening for the private sector to say, oh, so there's a need there that we could actually address. 
if we don't have these opportunities, then actually we miss out on the collaboration from other partners. The best thing about the Community Health Worker Award is that it's regional. It's not like a blanket Doctor of the Year Award. It's regional. It's East, West, Central. Isn't that right? Yes. So that gives that gives an opportunity for more for community more to workers be recognized. To be recognized. I think that is wonderful. Let's talk about the different categories of, of this year's HEHA Awards. Which one are you most excited about, Miss Noosh? <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to be biased. I think all of them. All, all of them. them because each of them brings a I specific um, conversation. Each of them brings a specific area of interest for the health sector. So you can't say I'll go for the community health work of the year or I go for the, uh, I think there's one on palliative care. I think there's one on, you know, a nurse of the year. So really health service provision is an uh, all encompassing yeah. um, sector. So I would really be excited about all of them. I wish we could facilitate more, I wish we could award more because, I mean, the others that are not within the categories but need to be there. But for this year, we are for all of them because they each play a specific role in service provision. Allow me to share the different approved categories for this year, please, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's the Lifetime Achievement Award, mm -hmm. the Public Health Facility of the Year Award, Private Health Facility of the Year, mm. Maternal and Child Health Healthcare Award, mm. Student Innovation Award, mm. Use of ICT and Innovation to Improve Patient Care Award, mm. Media Excellence in Health, mm. Doctor of the Year, Nurse of the Year, Midwife of the Year, Allied Health Worker of the Year, Pharmacist of the Year, Award of Excellence in Palliative Care, Community Health Worker Regional Award, and Excellence in Health Logistics Award. Mm. How incredible is that? That really encompasses the different exactly. sectors, doesn't yeah. it? Exactly. And I can't point to one because each of them is in a specific sector, in a specific area that as, a, as an institution that really advances health, you really want to see all these areas awarded. Absolutely. And we wish the best of those who have been selected, nominated. We wish them the best. Yes. For us, we are looking forward to 10th November. 10th November. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. What are your closing remarks this morning to the public, to health innovators, mm. to different p potential partners? Mm. So I think I really want to get back to what our vision is, which is a society in which social justice and human rights is realized in the health system, is realized in this country. I feel like we can only have this society if we work together. We can only have it if we are able to point out the big things, the bad things and the good things that we are actually um, are facing as a country because it's one thing to look at the challenges and another to look at the positive things. So this time round, we are looking at the positivity of what people are doing, at the innovations, and that's where we are coming up to say uh, we can support here. And uh, why? Because we are in various communities, more or less 35 communities in this country, districts, and the challenges per district is actually different. So since they are different, and we are having some good news with our indicators at the moment, I think we just released our Uganda Demographic and Health Survey report, and it shows some bit of difference in the so many things we've been speaking about, maternal health, teenage pregnancies, and all that. There's some slight uh, kind of uh, change within the statistics that we have as a country, and we can only get better if we worked together. So for HIHA, I think this year's theme really rallies behind what we think that we cannot do it alone. We can only create a platform for everybody to, to, yeah, to get involved and support the health system. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Nour. Dr. Stella, what are your closing remarks this morning? Thank you, Jackie. I think just to reiterate even what Nuru has said, um, healthcare is not just for the, for the health ministry. Um, and for me, I think uh, for us as living goods and, and me as an individual, we have, we have you know, spoken. I think it's time to reevaluate how we are engaging the different sectors. Is it strategic enough? Are we innovating? Are we evolving? You know, but also looking at healthcare from a systems lens so that we build systems that are resilient. COVID came and shook systems that were not resilient, but also pulling different stakeholders onto that table and calling ourselves to action. And HIHA is presenting opportunities to reward not just individuals, but institutions as well. We are rewarding institutions, we are rewarding programs, we are rewarding you know, students who are innovating. You know? So this presents an opportunity for strategic collaborations. How do we do them better? How do we call ourselves to action? To see that health is put at the center because it is the bread and butter of the economy. 
if we are not healthy as Ugandans, there's nothing else that we can do to contribute to other different sectors. So it's a call to action, but also to call other you know, players who are out there, private sector, institutions, come and join HIHA. It is a platform for learning, for collaboration, for partnerships. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Jackie, for having us this thank morning. Thank you, Dr. Stellan. Thank you, Ms. Noor. I'm very excited and I look forward to the 10th of November. Here at NBS, we'll do our part and we'll definitely showcase the HIHA Awards <coughs> and also have them in our subsequent bulletins, such as Live at 9. So you keep it here on NBS television. Good luck to the different chosen nominees for the health for the Heroes in Health Awards come 10th of November. Have a good morning. I'm Jackie Mutesi. This is Breakfast Meeting.